Having a high quality microphone is so important when making a video online, but all of us get this wrong because your laptop's audio is terrible. And those truly wireless headphones are even worse. But just having a good microphone is not enough because if you don't process your audio, it sounds like this, which is absolute rubbish. So if you want to get the best out of your microphone and your video's audio, then you need processing. I'm going to show you how to do that in a few really simple steps using Adobe Audition. Also remember that everything I show you here will work in other programs such as Audacity. So try it out. It will make your videos so much better. Remember, people will put up with bad cameras, bad lighting, but they will run away as soon as your audio sucks. Okay, I've got my mic set up about one fist distance from uh, my face. It's off the desk so I can move my hands around and I've recorded a really simple audio submit for you here. This is the unprocessed audio. Hello and welcome to Design eLearn Tutorials. Today we are going to be talking about a whole load of exciting topics. But first, we're going to process our audio. That sounds okay, but we can definitely make that better. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to normalize it, which is improve the uh, dynamics of the frequency. We see here that when it's very quiet, like those breaths, it's very small. And when it's loud, when I'm up, up and close, it gets larger. So we want to get that to the right level for YouTube. The way we do that is go to Effects, Amplitude and Compression, and then choose normalize. There's a whole load of different ways you can do this. Um, some people aim for minus 11 dB, but on YouTube, I go for minus three. So just double click in here, minus three, click apply, and there you go. It's just expanded the sound and maximized it. That has done uh, one thing I don't like, which is made the breaths louder. So if you are like me, a heavy breather, and you've got a microphone that picks up that, that will make it more noticeable, but I do have a solution for that in a few minutes. So now we've normalized it, we need to compress it. Now compression might sound a bit um, extreme, like we're trying to squash everything down as we've just made it larger, but actually what it's doing is evening out what happens. So the loud parts are brought down and the quiet parts are brought up to make it sound just a bit better in your ear. For that, back onto effects, amplitude and compression, and we just want the single band compressor, nice and simple. There's a whole load of different options you've got here. So I'm gonna just show you um, two of them, which I use a lot. Um, my voice is naturally quite deep uh, because I'm a guy. So I'm happy with the voiceover one. And it sounds like this, or even like this. Hello, and welcome to Design eLearn Tutorials. Now, if I run that again with the voice thickener, if you've got more of a higher voice with less bass, it will really bring out that richness and make you sound more confident and more powerful. It would sound like this. Hello, and welcome to Design eLearn Tutorials. So it is a bit of a subtle difference, but it is something that you'll be noticing. I'm happy personally with just voiceover apply, and I'm going to leave it at that. Now you can see that the uh, peaks and troughs have indeed evened out, making this much more clear. Again, those breaths have got bigger again, but we do have a fix for that. So now we've got the levels about right, we've got to think about the quality of voice. Now, EQ is a massive topic. If you're a sound engineer, you'll know a lot about this. I'm not going to go into the details. I'm just going to show you what I do on my voice, and it'll probably work on yours, which is just raising the bass a little bit to give me added depth and raise the treble a tiny bit to give me a bit more of a cutting presence. And I did say before that I'm quite happy with my voice being relatively deep, but I want to have a little touch there. So once again, effects, go to filter and EQ, and we want to go for the parametric EQ. Now I've got a very subtle adjustment here, which is just lifting up uh, my bass frequency, about 120 hertz by three decibels, and my treble at about 6,034 hertz by again about three and a half, three decibels. Now remember, we were normalizing to minus three before. That meant that we were not completely 
maxing out our speakers. We're just backing off. So in the same way, we are just peaking those ones up a little bit. Now let's have a look with that's what that sounds like. Today, we are going to be talking about, and now if I'm going to just roll back, turn this off. Today, we are going to be talking about a whole load. Of, so it is a very subtle lift, but it's one that will make you sound better. It's more subtle than the compression, which is why I like to use the voiceover and then a little bit of parametric EQ. You do have some drop downs here that, you know, if it's not things aren't working, you can chuck in the loudness maximizer or the vocal enhancer. But for me, this works every time. So I click apply and we're almost done. But you'll notice at the very start, we've got this sort of background noise hum, which is not something which I like. So we need to use the adaptive noise reduction. So we can go here to effects, noise reduction. Um, and there's a few options here, but adaptive works great for me. The default is pretty good, but I know I'm in a relatively quiet room, so I can go to light noise reduction. Now, if you're in a room with very heavy reverb, you might want to choose something like reverb single source, but you know, for this, it's fine. Let's have a listen to this um, with, and then without. Hello, and welcome to Design Elo. Okay, back to the start, this is without. Hello, and welcome. And then take it all the way back. Hello. It's a very, very subtle one on the preview, but if I click apply, you'll see that those beginning parts are just squashed. If I undo that again and go to um, noise reduction, adaptive, and then go to heavy, you'll see quite a lot of squashing happening down in these areas. It's just removing that background noise. Now, I'm just gonna leave it at this for now because it's a demo, but I'm just gonna show you how that sounds. Hello, and so it just deadened that start. Um, normally, I don't like to do this because as it's removing that background source, it's also removing part of your voice. Now, if you want to sound natural and sound good, that's not something you want to do. Anyway, let's continue. We've been playing around with the levels quite a lot, and it's been expanded and contracted and moved around a lot since our first normalization. So to finish off, I'm going to normalize again and bring everything to the level which I want to go for broadcast quality. So once again, back to uh, amplitude and compression, normalize. It's remembered my last setting at minus three dB, click apply, and we're done. Now you can do some things for clearing up and I mentioned that there's a problem with breathing. Let's hear that breathing. Today, yeah, pronounce sounds pretty nasty. It gets even worse later on in topics. But first, yeah, breathing in, breathing out. If you've got a um, high quality microphone like I've got, it will pick up the sounds. So there's two ways to use it. There's a free way and something a bit more interesting. So one way is just selecting audio, pressing um, no press space, you could right click and choose silence and that will just drop in a bit of nothing there. So let's go back to the very beginning. Hello. And there it goes. Now I can zoom in on the next breath. I'm going to show you here. Let's zoom right into this guy so you can get a good view of what it's like. Yeah, right. Pretty nasty. If I do the same technique to select, right click, silence, and I can do this. Let's have a look at here. tutorials today. So it's completely deadened that, and that's good. Now in a few second clip like this, you can go through quite easily and just remove all your breaths manually. That will take you forever on a half an hour video or anything longer. So I'm gonna show you what I use to get rid of breaths. It doesn't work 100% of the time and you've got to be a bit careful, but it works good enough for the quality teaching that I do. So what is this? It's a um, VST called Debreather. Now let's have a look here. A VST is virtual studio technology. You don't need to know that. All you need to know is a software that you download to your computer and works with your recording package. So VST, effects, waves, it's called Debreath Mono. I'll put a link to this in the description below. I'd recommend giving it a go because I absolutely love it and I wouldn't make a video without it these days. So 
I'm going to bring up the interface just here. And you know what, as I do that, I'm going to remove that silence I put in for the breath, bring it back and here. So watch this window and on the left as I play through the sample. Hello and welcome to Design eLearn Tutorials. Today we are going to be talking about, a you can see there on the side, the waveform of um, me talking. You might notice that when the breath came in, there was a different item. So we can work with these breaths. Let's see it again. Welcome to Design eLearn Tutorials. Today, see there's breath right there. So I'm just going to work on the thresholds. You want to have the peak, um, this line here. So we're going to be talking about a whole load of exciting above topics. This line, but and you want to have it below that one. So we'll notice here. Topics. But first, you need to have a slightly higher peak there and that one there. Topics. But first, and there you go, you can see that it identified where the breath is and added a silence for me. So let's play the whole clip with the breath uh, in place. Or Hello, deep and welcome to Design eLearn Tutorials. Today, we are going to be talking about a whole load of exciting topics. But first, we're going to process our audio. Now notice that it did not pick up the breath out and the last one was not picked up either. So we could spend time actually playing with these and we can use the different fades, different pieces, um, but I'm actually quite okay with that. So I'm gonna leave it at this, click apply, and you'll see that those main breaths have been squashed. I can then go through manually squash these ones. There's quite a nasty breath out just here. Let's just zoom in. We're going to, yeah, so let's, it's nasty because it's just on the cusp of something interesting. So click silence. We're going to, we're going to, okay, so let's have a listen to this whole crack now that I've finished processing audio in Audition. Hello and welcome to Design eLearn Tutorials. Today we are going to be talking about a whole load of exciting topics. But first, we're going to process our audio. There we are. So you would not know the breaths were ever there. The quality is not so processed that it sounds artificial. It does sound uh, rich, it does sound high quality, and it's easily achievable. This is something which I'm happy to put out on YouTube and happy to be putting out on my podcast. So I'm gonna go and save this. There's one other thing I want to mention, which is doing all this by hand can be a pain. So in Adobe Audition, you can record your favorites. All you do is click start record at the start, run through your effects and VSTs, whatever you want to do. Then at the very end, click stop and it saves it. What this means is that if I go back to the very start of just here, this is where I started. I'm gonna remove normalization. So this is where we started today. I go to favorites, voice, bam, it's done. Now the VST doesn't work on this. We've got to run the VST at the end as a quite a simple one. It's already remembered everything from before, so it's already kicked it out. And there we are. That is how to record great quality audio with Adobe Audition. Remember, this does work with Audacity and other programs. The interface will be different, but give it a go. I'm sure you will love it.